listening to the Holy Bible One Year Challenge with master storyteller Michael Wood, featuring the easy to read version and used by permission from Bible Week International. Enjoy the show! Hello, everyone. Welcome to day 108. We are continuing in the book of Deuteronomy in a letter to the Israelites written by Moses. And Moses gives another recap of the journey from Egypt to where they are now, just to remind them that the Lord has been with them this whole time and gave them victory over the people in the promised land that were already there, namely King Sihon of Heshbon and King Og of Bashan. But what if the agreement wasn't just for them, but was also for their descendants? Then not only would they have to obey everything the Lord commands, but the world would be watching them. And so it's not just their name and their reputation and the protection of curses that is on the line, but the Lord's name, his reputation to the world and how he treats his people is also at stake. And Moses describes the process by which the Lord will redeem them should they ever leave the Lord, that there is a way back and that they can be blessed again by the Lord. We're also continuing in the book of Luke and Jesus talks again about his coming death, but his closest followers just don't get it. They don't understand. Why would he allow himself to be beaten with whips and then killed. And what is this talk about rising to life again on the third day? Nobody has ever done that. And Jesus continues on his journey healing people. And in Luke 19, we meet a sinner, a tax collector named Zacchaeus. And he's a little too short to see Jesus with all the coming crowds. So he comes up with a solution to see Jesus and get above the crowds. Is he just a crazy fanatic? Well, one thing's for certain. The people around there know Zacchaeus is no Christian. Perhaps his sin is well known among everyone. And more than that, he's a tax collector. Let's see how Jesus responds to this short little man. If you enjoy the show, visit me at patreon.com forward slash storymaster. You'll find the link in the description box below. By contributing as little as $1 per month, you will enable me to continue this ministry. And you'll get cool rewards too. I want to give a shout out to Duncan Mensa. He also narrates parts of the Bible, and he has the coolest English accent. We recently collaborated reading Psalms. You can check out that video and more of Duncan's readings at his YouTube channel. You'll find the link below as well. Together, we're going to get through the Bible in one year. Let's get started. Deuteronomy 29 And a letter to the Israelites from Moses The Agreement in Moab The Lord made an agreement with the Israelites out Mount Horeb. In addition to that agreement, He also commanded Moses to make another agreement with them while they were in Moab. This is that agreement. Moses called together all the Israelites and told them, You saw everything the Lord did in the land of Egypt. You saw what he did to Pharaoh, to Pharaoh's officers, and to his whole country. You saw the great troubles he gave them. You saw the miracles and the amazing things he did. But even today, you still don't understand what happened. The Lord has not let you really understand what you saw and heard. He led you through the desert for 40 years. And in all that time, your clothes and sandals did not wear out. You did not have any food with you. You did not have any wine or anything else to drink. But he took care of you so that you would understand that he is the Lord your God. You came to this place, and King Sihon of Heshbon and King Og of Bashan came out to fight against us. But we defeated them. Then we took their land and gave it to the people in the tribes of Reuben and Gath, and to half the tribe of Manasseh. If you obey all the commands in this agreement, you will continue to succeed in everything you do. Today, all of you are standing here before the Lord your God. 
the leaders of your tribes, your elders, your officials, and all the other men of Israel are here. Your wives and children are here, and also the immigrants living among you, the people who cut your wood and bring you water. You are all here to enter into an agreement with the Lord your God. The Lord your God is making this agreement with you today. With this agreement, He is making you His own special people, and He Himself will become your God. He told you this. He promised this to your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Lord is making this agreement with its promises with you, but not only with you. Yes, He is making this agreement with all of you who are standing here with us today before the Lord our God. But this agreement is also for our descendants who are not here with us today. You remember how we lived in the land of Egypt, and you remember how we traveled through the countries that were on our way here. You saw their disgusting things, the idols they had made from wood, stone, silver, and gold. Be sure that there is no man, woman, family, or tribe here today who turns away from the Lord our God. No one should go and serve the gods of the other nations. People who do that are like a plant that grows bitter and poisonous fruit. Some people might hear these curses and comfort themselves by saying, I will continue doing what I want. Nothing bad will happen to me. But that attitude will bring total disaster. The Lord will not forgive them for that. No, the Lord will be angry and upset with them and punish them. The Lord will separate them from the tribes of Israel. He will completely destroy them. All the curses that are listed in this book will happen to them. They are part of the agreement that is recorded in this book of teachings. In the future, your descendants and foreigners from faraway countries will see how the land has been ruined. They will see the diseases that the Lord has brought to it. All the land will be useless, destroyed by burning sulfur and covered with salt. The land will have nothing planted in it. Nothing will be growing, not even weeds. The land will be destroyed like Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, and Zeboim. The cities the Lord destroyed when he was very angry. All the other nations will ask, Why did the Lord do this to the land? Well, why was he so angry? The answer will be, This happened because the Israelites left the agreement of the Lord, the God of their ancestors. They stopped following the agreement he made with them when he brought them out of Egypt. They started serving other gods. They began worshiping gods they never worshiped before. Gods that the Lord never allowed them to worship. That is why the Lord became very angry with the people of this land. So he brought on them all the curses that are listed in this book. The Lord became very angry and upset with them. So he took them out of their land. He put them in another land where they are today. There are some things that the Lord our God has kept secret. Only He knows these things. But He has told us about some things. And they are for us and our descendants forever. And we must obey all the commands and that law. Deuteronomy 30 verses 1 through 10. The Israelites will return to their land. Everything that I have mentioned will happen to you, both the blessings and the curses. And you will remember these words when the Lord your God sends you away to other nations. Then you and your descendants will turn back to the Lord your God. You will follow him with all your heart and completely obey all his commands that I have given you today. Then the Lord your God will be kind to you. The Lord your God will make you free again. He will bring you back from the nations where he sent you. Even if you were sent to the farthest parts of the earth, the Lord your God will gather you from there and bring you back. The Lord your God 
will bring you into the land your ancestors had, and the land will become yours. He will do good to you, and you will have more than your ancestors had. You will have more people in your nation than they ever had. The Lord your God will make you and your descendants want to obey him. Then you will love the Lord your God with all your heart, and you will live then the Lord your God will make all these bad things happen to your enemies who hate you and cause you trouble. And you will again obey the Lord. You will obey all his commands that I give you today. The Lord your God will make you successful in everything you do. He will bless you with many children. He will bless your cows with many calves. He will bless your fields with many good crops. He will be good to you. The Lord will again enjoy doing good for you, the same as he enjoyed doing good for your ancestors. But you must do what the Lord your God tells you to do. You must obey his commands and follow the rules that are written in this book of teachings. You must obey the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, then these good things will happen to you. Luke 18, verse 31 to 43. Jesus talks again about his death. Then Jesus talked to the twelve apostles alone. He said to them, Listen, we are going to Jerusalem. Everything that God told the prophets to write about the Son of Man will happen. He will be handed over to the foreigners, who will laugh at him, insult him, and spit on him. They will beat him with whips and then kill him. But on the third day, after his death, he will rise to life again. The apostles tried to understand this, uh, but they could not. The meaning was hidden from them. Jesus heals a blind man. Jesus came near to the city of Jericho. There was a blind man sitting beside the road. He was begging people for money. When he heard the people coming down the road, he asked, What is happening? They told him, Jesus, the one from Nazareth is coming here. The blind man was excited and said, Jesus, the son of David, please help me. The people who were in front leading the group criticized the blind man. They told him to be quiet, but he shouted even louder, Son of David, please help me. Jesus stopped there and said, Bring that man to me. When he came close, Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, I want to see again. Jesus said to him, You can see now. You are healed because you believe. Then the man was able to see. He followed Jesus, thanking God. Everyone who saw this praised God for what happened. Luke 19, 1 through 10. Zacchaeus. Jesus was going through the city of Jericho. In Jericho, there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a wealthy, very important tax collector. He wanted to see who Jesus was. There were many others who wanted to see Jesus too. Zacchaeus was too short to see above the people. So he ran to a place where he knew Jesus would pass then he climbed a sycamore tree so he could see him. When Jesus came to where Zacchaeus was, he looked up and saw him in the tree. Jesus said, Zacchaeus, hurry, come down. I must stay at your house today. Zacchaeus hurried and came down. He was happy to have Jesus in his house. Everyone saw this. They began to complain. Look at the kind of man Jesus is staying with. Zacchaeus is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there facing the Lord and said, 
Listen to me, Lord. I will give half of my money to the poor. If I have cheated anyone, I will pay them back four times more. Jesus said, Today is the day for this family to be saved. Yes, even this tax collector is one of God's chosen people. The Son of Man came to find lost people and save them. Proverbs 10, 1 through 10. The Proverbs of Solomon. These are the Proverbs of Solomon. A wise son makes his father happy. A foolish son makes his mother sad. Wealth gained by doing wrong is not worth it, but doing good will save your life. The Lord does not let good people go hungry, but he keeps the wicked from getting what they want. Laziness makes you poor, but working hard makes you rich. A smart son works hard all summer, but the son who sleeps through the harvest is a disgrace. People say good things about people who do what is right, but good words from the wicked only hide their plans to do harm. Good people leave memories that bless us, but the wicked are soon forgotten. The wise follow instruction, but the fool who will not stop talking will suffer for it. Whoever lives honestly is safe and secure, but those who lie and cheat will be caught. Evil secrets lead to pain and suffering, but speaking openly brings peace. Thank you, everyone. That was day 108. Join us for day 109. In Deuteronomy chapter 30, the Lord gives the people a choice between life and death, success or disaster. And we'll hear more about the new leader, Joshua. And in the book of Luke, you'll hear a story about three servants. Then Jesus enters Jerusalem like a king on a donkey. We hope you enjoyed today's verses. Be sure to leave us a positive review and to share this podcast with your friends and family. Please join us for the next episode as we experience the Bible in one year. Did you know we offer online courses in creative writing, literature, and web design? Visit us at storymaster.online to learn more.